Hello and welcome to another inspiring story of youth in agriculture. As always, this is where we bring you inspiring stories of young people who are thriving in the world of farming. And on today's episode, we have a very uh, interesting and very inspiring story from one Caroline Mwangi who quit her job uh, four years ago. What she didn't know is that four years down the line, she will be seated here as the founder and the CEO of Kim Planter and nurseries. Today, she will be sharing how it all started and where her dream is taking her. This is Youth in Agriculture. Stay with us. I'm the Presidential Award winner for Best Youth in Agriculture 2019. I'm also a youth and a youth ambassador for Youth in Agriculture Kiambu County. And today I welcome you to our company, Kimplanta Seedlings and Nurseries here in Riru. And I'll be taking you through the journey of a youth in business or rather in agribusiness, the excitement, the challenges, all the journey from where it started as a hobby to where it is right now as a commercial nursery. I was born in Laitoktok, raised in Kiambu County, particularly to be in Riru. And uh, my background, professional career is not agriculture. That was uh, CPA case and human resource. I'm in agriculture out of passion. This was born from a hobby while I was working after college. So I was looking for something to do after working hours. And I met with a friend who was already doing agriculture and something, it sparked something in me. And I started with passion fruits uh, farming uh, back in 2012. While I was in passion fruit farming, there were a bit of challenges here and there. The biggest of them was market, uh, bulkiness of the orders that I could not meet because I was doing this in an urban setting. Well, at it, I realized most of the people who were coming to visit me, they wanted the passion fruit seedlings more than they wanted the, the fruits. So I realized there's an opportunity here. So I started doing the passion fruit seedlings. Well, I was at that, I realized another opportunity gap. Farmers were frustrated by the vegetable seedlings they were raising on their traditional nurseries. So I took it upon myself to research and see how can we do this in a, maybe a new modern technology whereby we are getting a, a better germination rate and better quality of seedlings. So I took it upon myself to research, uh, mostly through the internet, and I found this technology that we are using today, the tree seedling technology. I discovered a company that was selling the trays and I started doing the whole process. And this is how I grew a hobby to a professional propagation business. So I started my farming journey when I was in formal employment. I did not leave formal employment and go start green into agriculture. It's something I had started as a hobby, then I realized it had some returns and there was a solution to be solved and that is where the business aspect of it came in. Just like any other youth, I faced the problems of a lack of land, lack of resources. So I used a friend's land. A friend who was in the US had left the land in the, in the care of my parents. So I requested to use that land for passion fruit farming. And eventually I made a very small greenhouse inside the passion fruit uh, plantation. We started with a propagation unit that was holding about 20,000 seedlings only. Okay, so it grew, the income also grew as I was weighing where I was working and this opportunity that has come. And I realized if I focused on that, if I put in a lot of effort on that, focus on my customer relations, on solving a problem that was with the farmers, I would grow that business. And with that confidence and a lot of fear of the unknown mixed together in a cocktail, I walked out of the office into the farm. That was 2016 June. And here we are in 2020, no regrets. Of course, it has been had its up and downs, challenges here and there, but it takes a lot of self-motivation and lack of self-doubt to be where we are. And I would tell the, the youth, persist, persist, persist. Celebrate the small wins because they will self-motivate you.
Uh, when I told my parents I want to do farming, first of all, they, were, they thought I'm just a confused youth who is just looking to explore. My dad could not figure out how I have just completed CPA case and I want to go into farming. But my mom was like, just give it a try. If you fail, you will say you tried. If you succeed, then it's a win. And with that, it was enough for me to go in. Uh, of course, my dad was like, you should do this slowly, step by step. And that was very, very important. You just don't jump into something. Take it step by step. The reception was ish-ish. My dad is my biggest support system. My mom, is a, she's very proud of what I am doing today. My sisters who later joined the business, they are also very happy with the outcome. Of course, it wasn't rosy, but here we are. The initial capital was uh, basically my savings from my first job. Of course, the salary wasn't big, but I had put in a lot of effort to at least save something. So it was small and small bits of saving here and there. I could say the greenhouse plus the first capital was about 80,000, if I can remember very well, because that greenhouse was very, very tiny. This was a wooden greenhouse that was very, very tiny, but I was very proud of that start, and I was determined to grow it. So the business has thereafter grew itself. We made profit. I would recoup back into the business, made profit, recoup back the business. I started as a one staff myself then eventually we had one other farm hand uh, and right now we have about 17 staff that are working in Kimplanta in all the three branches where we are as a solution provider Kimplanta seedlings we seek to provide quality seedlings and on top of that we want to make sure this farmer who has gone with our product is going to succeed how do we do it we have made this uh, branch, a one-stop shop, whereby the client walks in, they carry their seedling. At the point of sale, they are served by an agronomist. This agronomist will guide you on the best seed for your area where you are, the best seed to fight with the diseases that you're experiencing. We have people who have issues with soil borne diseases. We have issues depending on what climatic condition are we experiencing at that particular time. So at that particular point of sale, the client walks in, they have a conversation with our agronomist. They are guided even on the yield, how to take care of it, crop management. And if need be for them to buy farm inputs, they just walk into agrovet and buy farm inputs. The reason we are doing all of this is because it's one thing to have quality seeds and it's another thing to have the best agronomic uh, service or rather crop management in the farm. And they go hand in hand, the right seed, the right care for the right yield. What we are really encouraging at this particular time is for the farmer to be cautious of their cost of production per unit and as well as the yield production per unit. So that if they are able to solve that that, that gap in there, they will be able to solve the market challenge, whereby we have market fluctuations, the prices are going down, up. But if you're already aware of your cost of production and the yield of production, you'll be able to average which crop is giving us better margins, which crop, even if it is affected by marketing behaviors, they will still survive. That is the main focus right now because we want to change the game from just agriculture to Kilimo Biashara or agribusiness, whereby they are farming and they are recouping money from it to invest and grow. And if you can see the trend of the farming industry right now, it's a boom. Because what COVID has made us realize is most of the industries can be affected by issues or rather by unforeseen circumstances. But people will always eat, people will feed. And where is the food coming from? It's from this industry. This industry supports our economy. And there's a lot and a lot of opportunities to explore in agriculture. We have so many value chains and so many entry points in the chain. We deal with propagation of seeds, of the various vegetables. We normally deal with uh, propagation of seeds of both indoor and outdoor varieties for planting in the field or in the greenhouse. The, by, by propagation, we mean planting of the seeds in trees. We normally plant them on trees. We do not use soil or plant them directly on the soil. We normally use trees like this, what I have here. This is a sample of a tree. We plant our seeds directly into the tree, in the, into the tree using cocoa pits. 
The reason we use cocoa peat as our media and uh, the trays is to ensure that a farmer gets quality seedlings and seedlings that do not have diseases or pests. We normally plant the seeds one by one in a tray and ensure that uh, the, the seedling grows very well from day zero to 30 days. This is uh, managu, it is zero days. It was just planted today, so it, is, it has been planted, it has been put in, waiting for it to germinate. It will be ready in the next 30 days, after which a farmer is ready to collect and take them to the farm. So at Kimplanta, we work to ensure that the farmers get quality products, quality seedlings. Most farmers have been planting their seedlings and end up getting 50% losses or 100% losses. But here we've taken that initiative or we want to minimize the loss or the risks that the farmer encounters in the farm and ensure that they have 100% germination or 90 and above and the seedling is of high quality so that it is able to sustain and endeavor the conditions in the field and give them high yields. So in front of me, this is broccoli. Uh, it is 14 days old. It has already germinated and it, is, it has like 14 more days for it to be collected by the farmer. So for this seedling, we'll take care of it by all means. We'll, use, we'll do crop protection. We'll feed it in the right way to ensure it has a good rooting system. It has a strong stem and the leaf formation is very good. We also ensure that the seedling is well hardened <clears throat> so that if it's an open field variety, when it goes to the field, it is able to withstand the harsh conditions in the field. This is also a section where I have broccoli. It is also 14 days. As you can see, the stem is very healthy and the leaf formation is very good. Uh, it has been planted on a tree. It is doing very well. 14 more days and the farmer will be ready to collect it. Uh, as we proceed on, this is a sample of kale or sukuma as we call it locally. It is 20 days old. In a week's time, a farmer is ready to collect it and take it to the farm. As you can see, the foliage is very good, has a strong stem and the rooting is also good. As we proceed on, here I have a, a sample of tomato. This is tomato zara variety. It is high yielding and produces very well. As you can see, it is 20 days old, remaining seven days for it to be collected. It's almost, it's, it only has a week for it to live and proceed to the farm. As you can see, the stem is very strong. The foliage is looking very good. The leaves are healthy and big enough to be able to make their own food. Now this is the ready tomato. It is ready to go to the farm. It is 27 days. The stem is very strong, as you can see, and the foliage is good. The leaves are big enough and free of diseases. As you can see, no leaf has been attacked by any, any disease. As you can see, no leaf has been attacked by any disease. So this is a product that is ready to go to the farm, free of pests and diseases, and it is of high quality, as you can see. Again, when you look at our climatic conditions, things have really changed. And these hybrids, they have some, some tolerance to, to some of these factors. And as well, we're also encouraging people to be very keen on their food safety. What kind of uh, di diseases are we fighting and what kind of fungicides are we using, these chemicals? Look at the PHI. Let's create awareness with most of our farmers on what they are using, they are using so that we are also not facing a uh, very good production. But again, when we come back to this other side, we are facing people who have a lot of diseases that are coming back to the industry where we started. So food safety is something we are really encouraging. And that goes back to, again, hybrid, a seed that will let you not use so much of the chemicals to grow it. So Kimplanta Seedlings is a woman and youth-led organization and in that line we endeavor to create employment to youth and women. And one of the biggest impacts a company can have right now is the social impact. How many employees are you having? How are you impacting the society around you positively? And for us, right now we are directly employing about 17 youth 
and women in a, in a ratio of about 60-40 and we are very proud of that. We are hoping to grow. We have grown from a branch that had one, two staff in the beginning. By now we have three who has a, uh, with a total of 17 staff all together. And we are looking to grow further and further and create more employment directly. Indirectly, we are also empowering youth through mentorship uh, classes or other mentor mentorship uh, sessions. They come here, they, they engage with the staff that are here, they engage with me myself. We also uh, have an initiative we are calling Tunalima Young Initiative. So Tunalima Young Initiative is about inspiring or creating or nurturing just a bit of interest in agriculture with the young kids in school. had an action plan of course it was it wasn't well developed but what I did I broke it into bits and bits of things so that when I am achieving one bit I'll be like that is okay it wouldn't look like it's such a big unachievable dream thank you so much for staying with us uh, we will not be taking a short commercial break but don't go too far when we come back Carol will be taking us to one of our new branches and we just want to get a feel of what hard work persistence and passion can do to someone Stay with us, this is Youths in Agriculture.